Have you ever had a moment of worship where you felt completely uninhibited? The root definition of the word worship is the word worthship. The idea is returning to God the worth that he deserves and desires. Now, I believe that this definition gives us a hint that the beginning point for authentic worship is adoration. Now, the word adoration involves two elements. The first element is love, and the second element is esteem or respect. This is what I think we see in the lavish gift that the woman in the passage gives. Now, in Mark chapter 12, we saw a wood, widow who gave a tiny gift in the temple. And, God, and Jesus said it was an amazing gift to God because this woman gave out of her poverty. But in this passage, this woman gives out of what seems to be her wealth. She gave her best because she thought that Jesus was worthy of her best. Now, we don't often use the word esteem, but it's clear that this woman esteemed Jesus. And the word esteem actually makes sense when we consider that Jesus is the son of God. He is the creator and sustainer of the universe. We should esteem him. Our God is all powerful. He is holy. And in his mercy and grace, he sent his son Jesus to earth to fulfill his covenant with us and die on our behalf. Jesus rose from the dead. And it is through Jesus that we have hope for life in this world and in the life to come. Now, having said all of this, you would think that it would be very easy for us to esteem God. It should be quite natural because we can see all around us how great and truly awesome he is. And yet, each of us has a tendency to demean God through the way we live our lives. And I just want to be clear. I'm not just talking about you know those of you who are watching this video. I I'm talking about myself. We tend to become preoccupied with the things of this world, and we lose sight of the one who created this world. I remember uh, when I was growing up, the uh, Christian singer Carmen had a, had a song, and, and in, in it there was a line that said, we have to keep our eyes on the creator and, and not on his creation. Well, I mean, that, that's what happens. We're, we're, I mean, that can happen in an election, right? I mean, whoever you wanted to win, right, there's this sense of like, is that really the most important thing? Who's in the White House? Or is it who's on the throne of you know, the, the, the entire universe, right? The king of all kings. Now, scholars call our tendency to focus in on ourselves and lose sight of who God is the, the, to, to be uh, a kind of self-serving bias that is sin. But esteeming God through adoration and worship is the antidote to this tendency, to this disease that we might say is me-itis. Now, in our popular culture today, we talk a lot about loving God, but very rarely do we talk about esteeming and honoring him. The consequence of this shift in our culture is that we tend to love God the same way we love everything else in our lives. We love God when it's convenient for us to love him, and when it isn't convenient, we say to ourselves, well, I'm sure God will understand. But we need to have a healthy fear of God, because when we truly understand how great our God is, how magnificent he is, we will recognize that when we fail to put God first, we're not only failing in our worship, but we are violating God's command to place no other gods before him. Our God is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And yet so often we treat him casually. But that's not how you act around royalty. I remember a few years ago reading about when Peyton Manning and his wife Ashley went to the White House for a state dinner where the Queen of England was going to be present. Uh, Peyton talked about in an interview that there were all sorts of protocols for how he was supposed to act in her presence. For instance, you aren't supposed to speak to the Queen until she speaks to you first. You can't just go out and shake her hand. Only if she like touches you are you allowed to touch her. But you know, the idea was that Peyton and Ashley had to be prepared before they went into the presence of her majesty. He couldn't just call an audible like Omaha, I'm going to do something else. Sorry. That that made me laugh. I don't know if you care or not, but the idea of Peyton calling an audible in front of the Queen of England just strikes me as funny. Anyway, just like people who come into the presence of earthly royalty in front of a king or a queen and they have to be ready and prepared we need to be prepared before we come into the presence of the king of kings in worship and adoration helps us to remember what is necessary right we love god but we have to esteem him worship is much more than what we do on sunday mornings when we sing some songs in church in many ways our attitude and preparation for sunday morning is actually reflective of our attitude towards worship the rest of the week
If we want to be uninhibited in worship, and if we want to return to God the worth that he deserves, we have to recognize not just who he is, but who we are in his presence. We have value because we were made by God and we were created in his image. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that our worship would not be constrained to just singing a few songs on Sunday morning, but that our life would be an act of worship and that we would just recognize that because of who you are, we need to prepare ourselves as we come into your presence. Lord, we love you. Please be with us throughout the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.